right here. Yeah. It goes like Hmm? It's like this. There it is. Good morning. Good morning. All right. I am so excited to be here. As our next clerk and comptroller, I want to welcome you all. I'm Dave Ehrenberg, State Attorney for Palm Beach County. Is it okay? Can I remove the next one off? All right. I am very far from everyone. And uh, for everyone watching, on Zoom or wherever you are, uh, this is an incredible moment for me because Joe Abruzzo is one of my very closest friends in the world, and it's very meaningful to me to be part of this. I'm not allowed to officially swear him in because I guess the state attorney doesn't have those privileges. Craig, Craig, you got to work on that. Next, next uh, agenda item. But I get to at least welcome you and to express how proud I am of, of Joe. I've got to admit, though, as uh, you know, one of Joe's closest friends, uh, I actually was not super supportive of his idea to run for clerk and comptroller. But I tried to talk him out of it when he first called me with the idea. I said, hey, Joe, you know you've got a, a great gig in the private sector, you're doing well. The center of your universe, J2, who's here, and, you know, it's no secret that you are close with the Biden family. This was, you know, months ago, and I like his chances. And, you know, maybe you want to do something in D.C. or, you know, with the administration. And Joseph, no, I, I have a passion for this community, for serving our community in Palm Beach County. And I have a passion for the work of the clerk's office. And it really makes sense because Joe's favorite job in his life, and I remember when he was going through it, he had that, that spark in his eye when he was the chair as a state senator of the, the Joint Legislative Auditing Committee, the financial watchdog for the state of Florida, and that is a huge part of his new role. In fact, it's half the title, and as far as the other half, Joe has worked so hard through training and clerk school, I didn't even know there was such a thing as clerk school, <laughs> to get up to speed. I know it because I've tried to reach him over the past several weeks and he has been unreachable. He's all full-fledged in the books in the training sessions. And I didn't really ask him much about it because quite frankly, I think some of it could be kind of boring to me, but you know, he loves this stuff. <laughs> I mean, if you think about it, the clerk's office is the most important office in our county that few people outside the courthouse know about. They deal with all the paperwork, they deal with the financial oversight, they help keep the, the court system running. And if you want to know the, uh, how important this office is, think of it like this. Joe's budget is $70 million. As state attorney, chief law enforcement officer of the county, my budget is $23 million. Joe has 700 employees. We have 320, and one of them is here today, by the way, Craig Williams. Craig, great to see you, my friend. So, you know, you, you can just see the magnitude of this job, and I think the best thing that Joe has done so far is he has made sure that he has surrounded himself with the best and the brightest. The people who are here today, the people watching, they are the people who continue to make Palm Beach County proud. They are the people who make this clerk and comptroller's office the best in the state. And I know that Joe is going to be extremely successful. Uh, he has the passion, he has the, the energy, the drive, and he loves this community deeply. And I'm just so honored to be able to work with him as one part of the court system. I see the chief judge here. I see so many people that, uh, in a social distance way, that I know will really enjoy working with Joe. And I'll, I'll, I'll leave you with this before I bring up the rabbi. I think Palm Beach County is, uh, is going to be known, as it already is, for its court system, for the clerk, and also for the fact that we have the only clerk in the state 
that looks like Vin Diesel. That's the only one. That's the only one. I challenge you. I challenge you. So I would think maybe that would be the, the new mission statement of the office that Palm Beach County Clerk and Comptroller, we work fast and furious. <laughs> By the way, there's like nine sequels for that movie, right? So there'll be nine terms? Okay, Joe. So with that, I would love uh, to bring up uh, a person also who means a lot to my family, uh, who bat mitzvahed my niece and is, I'm going to a bat mitzvah for my youngest niece and she is presiding over it in a week, so this is like amazing. You go, my, my best friend gets, uh, gets sworn in and then uh, we go to a bat mitzvah a couple weeks later. This is sort of like a bat mitzvah joke, you know, in a way, right? In a way. Uh, it's really a bar mitzvah. It's actually, this, actually, this is more like a bris, if you come to think about it. You know? when, you, when you get sworn into office, it's more like a bris. I'm not going to go any further with that analogy. With that, I'd love to bring up Rabbi Amy Ray. Come on up, Rabbi. Hi, everyone. Good morning. I've never done a prayer for Vin Diesel, so this is really an honor. Thank you so much for that analogy. And I want to add my tremendous pride and joy for Joe, who is a very dear, close friend of our family, and my husband Kevin have been in politics together for many years, and you really are like family to us. So we're just so proud and honored to be able to witness your accomplishment today. You all know what a competent and caring and dedicated public servant Joe is. And so it's really no surprise that you have reached this milestone. This is something that you worked very hard for, that you put your heart and soul to, and I know that it will bring you and our community, we're so blessed to have you as our leader. And I want to just offer you um, this little piece of Torah. In our tradition, we call the, the Old Testament the Torah, and there's a beautiful narrative in the book of Exodus in which God commands the Israelites to build the tabernacle. And the Israelites are invited to bring whatever's precious to them. It's not, um, it's a big building project, but everybody is considered important enough to contribute what they have, whether it's pieces of cloth or fabric or jewels or metals. And then an artist by the name of Betzalel, the Torah tells us, is going to weave all of these items together into this beautiful dwelling place for God. And there's so many amazing messages, I think, just from the premise, right, that everybody contributes to this holy place on earth. But the piece that I want to point out that I'd never really paid attention to before, it's the greatest crazy thing about the Torah, you think you know it and you always learn new things, um, but that Moses was actually commanded to account for every single item that the Israelites brought. Whether it was a small piece of, of jewelry or a beautiful fabric, that Moses was the one separate from the artist who really had to keep this record and this log of every single item because every single item was important and represented one part of the community. And the rabbis of our tradition tell a story that at one point Moses is reviewing the logs and he notices that two pieces of silver, two small pieces of silver are missing. And Moses is frozen with worry. He just can't imagine what could have happened? Did it get stolen? Are the records wrong? And Moses actually takes seven days, it says, to search for these two missing pieces of silver. And he investigates and he searches and asks questions and finally he discovers that there are two small silver hooks that are holding up curtains in the inside of this holy dwelling place. And they just hadn't been written down. And so Moses is attributed with keeping the sanctity of this place by making sure that everybody's contribution was fairly and accurately represented. Nothing got lost, nobody got overlooked, and the holiness of the project was maintained. Now, I know Moses is a pretty high standard, <laughs> and maybe that might be a bit uh, of an overshot for our modern world, but if anyone can protect our public records and our public funds with integrity and honesty and responsibility, Joe Abruzzo, you are the one to do that. 
And so if you wouldn't mind to just rise for a moment as I offer this prayer to our new clerk and comptroller of Palm Beach County. To you, Joe, I pray that you always have a clear vision of your responsibility and that you always have the courage to do what is needed as a protector of our community's precious resources and records. I pray that you continue to be supported by friends and family and colleagues who respect your work and who give you strength to continue day in and day out. And mostly I pray that you find satisfaction and fulfillment as you serve our community with the gifts God has bestowed upon you. May today be the beginning of a new chapter of your life of public service that brings blessing to your name, our community, and our world. Amen. You can be seated. Thank you, and to, to my, wow, you know, to have my son with me, J2, and, and Joe, uh, I was supposed to put my hand on the book. <laughs> but you did a great, great job. Uh, first and foremost, to the Palm Beach County residents uh, that have elected me uh, to serve them in the legislature for over, for a decade, and now as their clerk of the circuit court and comptroller, I cannot thank you enough for placing your trust uh, and the responsibility of all these different offices in me. And I take the duty extremely serious, and I'm so thankful for all, that, all the opportunities you have provided for me. Uh, most of all, uh, obviously our community has been dealing with a worldwide pandemic that we've never seen before. But our community has come together in a way under the leadership of everyone, from our county commissioners and constitutional officers, uh, to our spiritual leaders and community leaders that to the likes we've never seen and we are already prevailing and there's no doubt uh, as now the vaccines start to roll out and as things start to happen we are going to emerge even stronger than we've ever been and I am so proud to be a member of the community of Palm Beach County. To all the community leaders, the HOA leaders, the COA, the condo association leaders, our spiritual leaders, especially those in the glades, uh, I also would not be here for you without you and you, I know many of you are watching from home and thank you, can't thank you enough. To our unions, our teachers, fires, police, building trades, labor unions, you are what keeps the backbone of our working class strong here in Palm Beach County and I also would not be here without you. To the truly uh, countless elected officials that I have worked with, been by my side, uh, who have supported me throughout the way, thank you. Dave Ehrenberg, one of my closest friends for the past 20 years. I've learned a great deal from you. Your preparation, your work ethic, and most of all, the way that you work with others, those who work for you and those who you work with. Uh, I've, I've ta taken your guidance and example with me in every way, and now into this constitutional office, uh, it, it, your, your teachings will be a big part of it. Uh, and thank you uh, very much. I'm sure he skipped out on Morning Joe to be here this morning, to be here this morning with this Joe. So please send my condolences to Joe Scarborough, but I obviously needed you and you're always an impossible uh, act to follow. R Rabbi Rader, I could not 
uh, agree more. You and Kevin, Senator Rader, are like family to me. And to be a part of your life and, and the plans, how we talk about what we're going to see in the future about our children and, and just watching life develop, it, it means the world to me. Uh, Kevin, your guidance and advice uh, has been one of the most solid foundations since the day we met. And if I listened to you better, I, I know I would be in a far different position. Uh, but, but thank you so much for your friendship and really family. Chief Judge Mark Marks, thank you so much for swearing me. The 15th Judicial Circuit, as State Attorney Aaron Berg alluded to, is held in the highest regard, not only throughout the state, but throughout the nation. And that is primarily based on your leadership and how you manage the bench and things. And I look truly forward to being your partner and balancing justice. Uh, and I will get a little bit more into the philosophy uh, when, I, when I speak about the office. You know, 12 years ago, I was fortunate enough to get my first big brother, Frank Biden. Uh, he never had a little brother either. I don't know if his other siblings were happy about that or not, but the ride over the past decade or more has been incredible. And uh, I cannot wait in 15 days to introduce you as the first brother of the United States. Briefly, to the 700 employees who are either watching now, depending on their duty at hand, or will be watching later, I ask you to please bear with me. I do have some pertinent information. I'll be talking about the office, but my family in large, obviously because of COVID, and many supporters and friends, as you hear, were not allowed to be here today. Uh, so I will briefly get through this, but I do have uh, some stuff you're probably going to want to hear, so I, I ask you to bear with me. You know, when you run for office, it's a family decision. Because when you run, your family runs. And when you serve, in part, your family serves. And when the opportunity came to run for the office on the retirement of Clerk Bach, uh, my first call was to my former wife, Brandy. And obviously, we had to discuss the mechanics of going back into public life because although this is not like Tallahassee where I will be gone for four and a half months or more during the year, it's the early mornings, the late nights, especially as COVID society, uh, being part of the clerk team uh, with the incredible large workforce we have, it was vital that I had Brandon's support. I cannot thank you enough for the conversations we had and even more the friendship that we've been developing and raising our incredible son, J2, wouldn't be here without that support. Thank you very much. To my son, Joseph J2, you know, you already know everything I do is for you. And we do everything together. It wasn't just getting sworn in. You know, we try to do uh, even the, the activities. He takes karate. Don't tell anybody, I take karate. <laughs> he does BMX, I ride bikes. Uh, baseball, soccer, everything that we do. Uh, you know, a, a lot of times the, the, the children, as I learned, emulate the father, but as Brandy can tell you, we like everything the same, <laughs> naturally. So uh, I love you more than anything. You're everything to me. And, you know, dad, dad is not going anywhere. This is, I'll always be here right at home with you. Uh, you know, I was fortunate enough to meet uh, seven out of eight of my great grandparents. And my grandparents, uh, which three out of four are, are, are watching today, uh, were one of the most instrumental parts of my life. Uh, my grandmother, Rosemary Cataldo, a school teacher. My grandfather, Bud Cataldo, who started as a food and beverage director at a Holiday Inn, and I, I truly saw the American dream. Uh, he, he started uh, and, and worked his way up to owning his own hotel company. Uh, my grandmother, Antoinette Abruzzo, who ran our family tuxedo rental store, who's watching today, and the pers person I'm primarily named after, Joe Abruzzo, who not only worked in the tuxedo store, but had a lifelong career as a, a sheriff's deputy. And I appreciate the deputies being here uh, as well. Uh, your lessons that I've learned in life uh, also mean the world, and, and I take them with me every day. I was also fortunate enough to, that I have two incredible parents. Uh, my mother, who's watching, Therese Cataldo, uh, was a small business owner and raised me primarily as a single mother. And my father, Peter Abruzzo, who instilled the lessons of business and, 
and how to conduct myself from a very young age. Uh, I watched him too start with a tuxedo store and owning one buggy horse races to uh, becoming an icon in the formal wear industry and running in the Kentucky Derby and winning the Kentucky Oaks. So my point is I've seen the American dream when you start with very little, find the economic side and work up for family security and being able to pro provide jobs for others, hundreds if not thousands of people you do not know. And seeing that also plays into my philosophy in the office. To my little big brothers, Alec and Jonathan, I call my little big brothers because I'm 10 and 11 years older than them, but they're 6'2 or more, so I'm always looking up at them. And, uh, I can't thank you enough for being such a cool, uh, cool uncles to my son, Joe. And I know you get your coolness from your mom, Joe Abruzzo, my stepmom. Love you guys, I know you're watching. To all my aunts, uncles, and cousins, I know so many are watching, obviously coming from a big Italian family, primarily in Chicago, been here for 21 years. I promise I will not go through it all because we will be here for about a week. Uh, thank you all for your support. I have many, uh, many uh, cousins and uncles and aunts that are attorneys and work in, in, in the system and uh, sheriff's deputies that work in particularly the courthouses, a few judges. Thank you. Uh, conversations we have, I take with in this office as well. I have some friends that have become like family that I have to mention. Victoria McCullough, my big sister, Marty Kerr, Adam Platzner, Will Hurst, Scott Zankel, Kumal Sharma, Mike Greenfield, Michelle Stepnick, and so many others. Uh, and my surrogate Florida mother, Leslie Schreiger, Schreiber, and Dave knows, uh, I better get in Leslie. Uh, <laughs> uh, Prince Andre Fladell. I could teach a college course on Prince Andre Fladell, much less give brief remarks. So in the interest of time, thank you, Prince Andre. To my campaign team, the MVP this cycle, no doubt, who snuck in, uh, Rick Esnani, thank you so much for being here. You are uh, incredible. And it's not that you know how to run campaigns. I see the interest in your clients, and your philosophy for the community uh, is really unique about how you care and, and angle your advice to your candidates, truly based on what's best for the community and always not just winning a race to win a race. Uh, it was a breath of fresh air and I, I truly appreciate it. Uh, Eric Johnson, where we started in the late 90s here uh, in Palm Beach County, and we've seen our community change quite a bit. Christian Albert, one of the best messengers uh, in the business. To my past legislative staff, you know, we were a very quiet staff, and we had accomplishments. We very rarely sent out press releases gloating about the 50 bills in law or the money back to the district. And uh, as, as you know, uh, in this office, it's going to be a little different. I am going to be incredibly proud uh, to, sub to get out in public about the things our office is doing. Uh, I just did not want to show vote, but all that work that happened in the legislature it would not have happened without the staff. No doubt, no question, you were the biggest part of it. I know also you are all watching today. Thank you, thank you, thank you. To the judiciary, uh, Chief Judge Marks, uh, I am so excited uh, to serve as the clerk of your court. And as we have had some conversations, you know, the philosophy of this office, and I will speak about Amy Borman, who will be Chief of Courts, uh, we are on agreement. We are not above the bench. We are not equal to the bench. We are here to serve you. We are here to serve the judges and the institution, and that will be the way we operate from this moment forward in every aspect. To the Board of County Commissioners, I know because of COVID reasons, uh, we couldn't have everyone today. But I have to say to Mayor Kerner, what an incredible job you have done in ma managing COVID and keeping our community on track. Uh, Vice Mayor Weinberg Roth being his partner, Maria Sachs, who we've served together for a decade in the legislature. I'm so excited to be the clerk to the Board of County Comm Commissioners and working with you again. Mac Bernard, uh, one of my brothers from the legislature. Greg Weiss, who we've been in the Democratic political circles for nearly 20 years together. And new Commissioner Marie Marino, who uh, I, I know we've crossed paths up in Palm Beach Gardens, but I look forward to working hand in hand with you as well. 
to the seven, six other constitutional officers, many also who I've served with uh, at some point in time. Of course, Dave Ehrenberg, Rick Bradshaw, uh, Sheriff Bradshaw, your support meant the world. I look forward to being true partners with Ann Gannon and Dorothy Jacks, our tax collector and property appraiser. Their office particularly, particularly, if so many inner workings with the clerk's office, it's very important. Uh, Wendy Link, who I've known forever, uh, more in the realm of education, look forward to working with you. And uh, our public defender, Kiri Lee. Uh, we've, uh, when I served on justice appropriations, working with you to make sure we had money in the budget for the Office of Public Defenders, very important. To my brothers and sisters, my fellow Coasties in the United States Coast Guard, those over on the West Coast where I serve, PSU 307 and MSU Chicago, Semper Paratus, honor, respect, devotion, and duty. I will be speaking about that later. So love all of you. You know, I've been privileged to work for three different type of legal, uh, have three different type of legal jobs in my career. The first was being one of the founding members of the Office of Criminal Conflict and Civil Regional Council, where I learned a great deal about guardianship. Uh, and I have to thank that then director, Phil Massa. Uh, it, it was incredible to see a legal agency, a state legal agency, start from a cell phone and grow into serving a multitude of different circuits. Uh, thank you, Phil, for allowing me to take that initial ride with you. I've been privileged to work for two very, very good uh, local law firms that I've learned a great deal from. Weiss Handler, then Angelos Cornwell. Uh, I cannot thank Howard Weiss, Henry Hand Handler, Cynthia Angelos, and Bill Cornwell enough. Uh, I got a true inside look for institutional lawyers that have been practicing in front of the 15th Circuit for decades. And the lessons and the things I learned about the law from a non-lawyer is truly invaluable. Uh, I will be seeking your guidance quite a bit uh, when things come across my desk to see what your opinions are. I trust you, I care for you, and thank you. To the Berman Law Group where I've spent the last two years. The Berman Law Group uh, has the slogan committed to the community, but what I learned from the day I started working, that wasn't just a slogan. To see a, a, a law firm operate uh, in the new era of millennials and how the legal profession is going was also uh, a great, great opportunity for me to learn. Uh, I thank you for also the guidance of incredible attorneys and staff, and, and I appreciate you letting me depart and taking this journey to serve in the public again. I have to thank Clerk Bach a great deal. Clerk Bach set the standards, especially on the technology front in this office. She revolutionized under her leadership, starting with paper records going digital. And then all the advances with the technology revolution, uh, obviously this office has won countless awards. And not only has it won awards, but other clerk's offices, not just from around the state of Florida, but from around the entire nation, emulated what the Palm Beach County Clerk and Comptroller's Office have done. And you deserve all the credit in the world, and that will never be forgotten in this office. And I have to thank you a great deal to allowing me to communicate with your then staff all the way since from June to start a transition process, to allow me to learn the things that I was not familiar with and truly have build a, a, a really good understanding. In the Coast Guard, we have the saying, Semper Paratus, always ready. I feel I am ready based on your opportunity to, to meet with your great staff. To the employees who are watching, and or will be watching, you are the foundation of this office. Everything that occurs positive happens from you. I enter this office with you in mind. We are going to set a new philosophical course of our, of our office and how it's done. <laughs> State Attorney Aaron Berg brought up fast and furious, but as I mentioned, I've been living by the core values that was instilled in me from the military, honor, respect, devotion, and duty. I cannot change my core values. That's the way we will follow. And I know the things I'll be meeting with you personally and some of our addresses over this week and the coming weeks, you're going to be very excited 
uh, on, on the direction we set. We are going to first look at the safety standards in our office. One of my top priorities, if not the top priority, is to ensure that we as a st staff, not only for COVID, but every possible event of safety can be avoided and be taken care of. So I will be working with our HR, our county, our mayor, our administrators in the county to make sure all our safety standards are up to date. You've heard me mention throughout the campaign, childcare. It is also my top priority, especially with pandemics on the rise, that we find some sort of alleviation, whether it be through credits or a partnership where, where most of the offices, office, our, our parents or single parents, we will find, find a way to produce better childcare for our staff. Health and wellness is very important. We have such a great program already, we will also be expanding upon that. And now, I'm so excited to introduce and mention our executive team and senior leadership team. First, Shannon Ramsey Chessman, the Chief Deputy Clerk. A 16-year veteran of the Clerk's Office, Shannon will serve as the second in command and will oversee, oversee a multitude of duties. I cannot thank you enough for coming back to the office, and we are going to have a heck of a ride. Amy Borman, who I had the pleasure of mentioning earlier, will serve as the Chief Operating Officer of Courts and Official Records. Amy previously served as Director of Branch Operations for the Clerk's Office. After serving more than 12 years as General Counsel with the 15th Judicial Circuit, she brings extensive experience with the Clerk's Office and our Justice Partnership to her, to her new role. Radcliffe Brown will serve as the Chief Operating Officer of Finance. This is a very, as they all are important, but we manage billions of dollars of your public money. And what Rabbi Rader talked about safeguarding, uh, it, it absolutely starts on our finance side. Radcliffe has been with the clerk's office for more than 28 years, most recently serving as the Director of Finance Services. He will work as manager in the clerk's IT and finance department and has previously, previous knowledge in both programming and accounting. Kathy Bernstein, who we have had a great time getting to know each other, uh, will serve as the communications director, the chief communications director. Kathy has served as the clerk's chief communications officer since October 2018. She, she previously, previously worked as a reporter for the South Florida Sun Sentinel and with the communications department for the school district. Jessica Kinnear, Jessica Kinnear, McDonald. <laughs> I'm not used to say that because Jessica then near uh, served as my chief, one of my chief of staffs in the Senate. Jessica was named one of the 20 and brings her experience in both state government and law to the clerk's office. Thank you, Jessica. To the employees, one new, completely new position that we have created. Uh, I, we have created an ombudsman which is your representative. He is not part of the executive team. He represents you directly. Office. I cannot thank you, Lisa, enough for coming back. Let me know the 700 employees at the office, and you are an incredible, incredible asset. I briefly want to mention the directors, who will all be part of the executive team. Wendy Beso, the director of IT. Parik. Hurry, help me out here. Chafti. <laughs> Deborah Love, Rebecca. Michelle Nelson, Kathy Saver, Louis Tameo, and Rob Whitcomb. We've had some opportunity to spend time together, and I'm priorities is making employees from 